Hello everyone, I hope you are all doing good. Dr. MK here and welcome back to our channel. If you are following our channel videos regularly, you will be aware of that. I have planned to make a series of videos on rearrangement reactions. In this aspect, I have already made a video on pinacol, pinacol and rearrangement reaction. Now, I am going to discuss bare willigar oxidation or bare willigar rearrangement reaction in this video. Shall we start? Before going to discuss the reaction in detail, I would like to give a brief introduction about bare willigar oxidation or bare willigar rearrangement. In this reaction, a ketone is treated with paracid or hydrogen peroxide and it will be converted into an ester. Suppose if you have a cyclic ketone, that cyclic ketone when it is treated with paracid or hydrogen peroxide, it will be converted into a lactone. Lactone is otherwise called a cyclic ester. So that is a reaction. Basically, this reaction involves a oxidation of ketone into ester or lactone. So that is why this reaction is called as bare willigar oxidation. And also you can call it as bare willigar rearrangement. This reaction was reported in 1899 by Adolf Bayer and Victor Williger. The reaction involved the conversion of camphor into the corresponding lactone. You know that camphor is an example of cyclic ketone. As I said already, when a cyclic ketone is treated under this condition, it will be converted into corresponding lactone. And they have used peroxy monosulfuric acid as a reagent for this conversion. And I would like to give the publication link in the description section. Whenever if you find time, you can go through that. Various kind of mechanisms were proposed. Finally, Rudolf Greek came with the new mechanism and that mechanism was accepted by the scientists and we are following that mechanism till date. With a basic introduction, let us learn this bare willigar rearrangement in detail. As I said already, bare willigar oxidation or bare willigar rearrangement reaction involves the conversion of ketone into ester. This is an example of ketone. When a ketone is treated with parasit, so this is called as parasit. or it can be otherwise called as peroxy acid. When a ketone is treated with peracid or peroxy acid or in the presence of hydrogen peroxide, H2O2 is called as hydrogen peroxide and this ketone will be converted into an ester. Similarly, if you happen to look at this second reaction and this is an example of cyclic ketone. When a cyclic ketone is treated with paracid or peroxy acid and it will be converted into corresponding cyclic ester, this cyclic ester is called as generally lactone. So basically in this reaction, ring expansion is taking place. If you happen to look at this reaction closely, paracid or peroxy acid or hydrogen peroxide, it is an oxidizing agent. What happens here, that is an oxygen is inserted between carbonyl carbon, this will be carbonyl carbon and this R group and you are going to get a corresponding ester. Similarly, if you have to look at this reaction, an oxygen atom is inserted between the carbonyl carbon and this carbon atom and as a result, you are going to get lactone. So basically, insertion of oxygen is taking place in bare willigar oxidation or bare willigar rearrangement. So, with this basic thing, let us discuss the mechanism in detail. So, in this case, acetone is taken as a reactant and assume that it is treated with any paracid and this acetone is converted into methyl acetate. What is the mechanism involving this reaction? You know that the C double bond is polarized into del plus and del minus that is partial positive charge or partial negative charge. An oxygen of paracid having lone pair of electron and it attacks the partial positive center of carbonyl carbon as a result electron is moving towards oxygen atom leading to the formation of this intermediate and this O- is taking hydrogen from this species and electron is moving towards the oxygen atom and as a result both oxygen becomes neutral and this is said to be the Greek's intermediate. Now, this electron is moving towards a carbon atom and you know that this carbon valency is already 4 
and if a bond electron is coming towards a carbon atom, the valency will be increased by 1, that will valency be 5. In order to compensate the valency, either this alkyl group or this alkyl group should be migrating. In this case, both are methyl group. So, one methyl group is migrating from this carbon atom into this oxygen atom. As a result, the electron is moving towards the oxygen atom. And this carboxylate part, this hydrogen part, they are combining together and it will be removed as carboxylic acid as a byproduct. And what happens in this reaction is CH3 single bond C double bond O and it has an oxygen atom to this oxygen atom methyl group is connected and that is what you are going to get both are same and this part this Greek inter I mean this Greek intermediates is undergoing rearrangement and it is producing ester as a product by the removal of carboxylic acid they may ask a question what is a byproduct of bare willinger oxidation or bare willinger rearrangement and you need to say the carboxylic acid is a byproduct of this reaction so, this is about the acyclic ketone. Now, let us discuss the cyclic ketone part. Here, I have taken cyclohexano. When the cyclohexano is treated with paracid and it is converted into caprolactone. Now, what happens in this case? As usual, the mechanism will be the same. A lone pan of oxygen is attacking the carbonyl carbon as a result the electron is moving towards oxygen atom and this O minus take the neighboring hydrogen atom as a result the electron is moving towards the oxygen atom leading to the formation of the Greek intermediates. Once this intermediate is formed this hydrogen electron is migrating towards the carbon atom as a result the carbon carbon single bond is broken and it is moving towards this oxygen atom. So, the, basically it is happening carbon to oxygen rearrangement and this bond is broken and carboxylic acid will be leaving and if you want to uh, draw the structure, initially you need to draw the structure in this manner that is without disturbing the other bond. What happens here? So, they, here a C double bond O formation will be there and here also an oxygen will be there. Now, this carbon carbon bond is broken and it is connected to this oxygen atom. So, that is how you need to draw the product initially so that you won't make any mistake. And during the course of the reaction, carboxylic acid will be leaving. And if you happen to look at this structure, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. This is a 7 member ring system and that is called as caprolactone. So, both are same. So, that is how you need to draw the mechanism. Suppose if you have an unsymmetrical ketone, in the previous case it is a symmetrical ketone, that means. So, this is also CS2 part, this is also CS2 part. Any of this CS2 group can be migrating. And previous to this, when you have acetone, both are methyl groups. I said already both are methyl groups. So, any one of the methyl group can undergo migration and both you are, get, you are going to get the same product. And suppose if you have an unsymmetrical ketone, then what will be the product? Which group will be undergoing migration? For the reason, you must know the migratory aptitude. The best migratory group will be tertiary alkyl. And followed by secondary alkyl group, then phenyl. After that, you have N alkyl, that is a primary, for example, ethyl or butyl, propyl, for example, like that. And finally, you have methyl group. So, this is a general migratory aptitude and if you happen to look at here, that is a phenyl group. The phenyl group can be categorized into three categories. Among this phenyl group, the electron donating group attached to phenyl will be the best migratory group. For example, that is parathoyl will be a better migratory group and now this is unsubstituted system that is phenyl. That is second better migratory group and poor migratory group will be phenyl will, which is having electron withdrawal group. For example, you can have paranitro phenyl. So, this is a general migratory aptitude of bear will get rearrangement. And with this basic thing, let us solve this question now. This is said to be acetophenone. When acetophenone is treated with uh, trifluoroparacetic acid, what would be the product? Let us discuss the mechanism initially. As usual, the lone pair of oxygen atom 
is attacking the carbonyl carbon as a result the electron is moving towards oxygen atom and this oxygen is taking the neighboring hydrogen atom and both oxygen become neutral leading to the formation of the Greek intermediate. Now when this electron is coming here either the methyl group can undergo migration or phenyl ring can undergo migration. As I said earlier in the case of migratory aptitude, so phenyl is better migratory group than methyl group. So if you apply that concept here, the phenyl group will be undergoing migration. And this oxygen-oxygen bond is broken and leading to the formation of product like this. So this is said to be phenyl acetate. The byproduct carboxylic acid will be removed. And in this case, the carboxylic acid is trifluoroacetic acid. So that is a product that we have given here. If you are appearing for a competitive examination, and every time you you no need to have to write the mechanism, there is a shortcut method to find out the product in bare willigar oxidation or bare willigar rearrangement. What is the shortcut, sir? If you ask a question, I can give you now. And if, we, if it is a ketone, there will be always poor migratory group and good migratory group attached to the carbonyl carbon, if it is an unsymmetrical ketone. When this molecule is treated with parasite, as I said already, in bare willigar oxidation or bare willigar rearrangement, an oxygen atom is inserted between the carbonyl carbon and the migratory alkyl group or aryl group. And what shortcut you need to know is, the oxygen should be introduced between the carbonyl carbon and good migratory group. The poor migratory group should not be the answer. You need to always introduce the oxygen atom between the carbonyl carbon and the good migratory group and you will get the corresponding ester or lactone as a product. So this is a basic shortcut one have to know. So with this basic shortcut method, I will I'll, I would like to give some examples and with the shortcut only I am going to solve those questions. Now, this is an unsymmetrical ketone and this is treated with the parasit. So, this is a parasitic acid and what will be the product? So, this is phenyl group and now nitro is an electron withdrawing group. So, phenyl is attached with an electron withdrawing group. So, which is a better migratory group? Obviously, phenyl will be the better migratory group. And you need to introduce the oxygen atom between the carbonyl carbon and this phenyl group. So that is a better migratory group. And you are going to get a product like this. Now let us discuss the next question. Here you have cyclohexyl ring and here you have methyl group. And if you have a look at this carbon, this is a secondary center. So basically you need to know that um, if you want to know the nature of the carbon atom, just exclude the C double bond O carbon. Carbonyl carbon should be omitted and rest of the carbon should be counted. And if you happen to look at here, so this carbon is connected to this two carbon atoms. Hence, I am calling this carbon as a secondary carbon. I hope you are able to understand this. Now this is a secondary center and this is a methyl group. Which is a better migratory group among these two? Secondary will be a better migratory group. What you need to do is that is a better migratory group and C double bond O. In between that, you need to introduce this oxygen atom. And what will be the product? You are going to get this also. Now you have next example. And in this molecule, which will be the uh, product? And you need to know this carbon and this carbon atom nature. So, in the first carbon that is this is connected to two carbon atom, it is considered as secondary and the secondary carbon, second carbon atom is considered as primary. And among secondary and primary, secondary will be a better migratory group. What you need to do is, MCPBA will give an oxygen atom and it is introduced between the secondary carbon and carbonyl carbon. And you are going to get a product like this. A lactone formation and this is the final example you need to look at these two carbon atoms attached to the carbonyl carbon so this carbon and this carbon at the top carbon is an example of a primary center and this is an example of secondary center 
you know which is a very bit better migrated group obviously a secondary carbon atom will be a better migrated group so you need to introduce an oxygen atom between the secondary car car carbon atom and the carbonyl group and you are going to get a lactone in this case you need to write oxygen atom you need to keep a double bond o and here methyl group will be there and here isopropyl group will be there that's it i strongly believe that you might have learned at least something from this bayer willinger oxidation or bayer willinger rearrangement especially those who are writing for competitive examination you might have learned the shortcut method to find out the product uh, if bayer willinger oxidation or bayer willinger rearrangement based question was asked and if you find so you can like the video share your opinion in the comment section and do not forget to subscribe our channel and i will meet you all in the next and interesting video until then take care